YouTube folks. We're gonna try this again this week. This is a Mr. D uh, Facebook Live. So I'm gonna mostly be paying attention to my phone where the comments will be, but if we have trouble as we did last week, I will come back to YouTube and, and send them over here for this one. But I like to do it on live here so it uploads automatically to YouTube for people for later use. Um, so tonight's an Ask Mr. D session, but I'm gonna make sure I get everything set up for my Facebook Live. Um, so we'll just hang tight for like a minute um, and I'm gonna start it right at 6 p.m. So um, you can uh, have this in the future on the YouTube, right? on the YouTube. We'll see how it goes this week. I'm gonna get my old lady glasses just in case I have to see. All right, so I hope everybody's having a good summer. I just got back from New York, saw three shows, had a crazy flight home, almost didn't get here in time. Went to Savannah, because the weather was terrible. All right, it's almost time. And, uh, but I'm glad to get here. I got here like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, we're almost ready to start. gonna do it. Hello everybody, it's Mr. D at In the Middle Mr. D1 at blogspot.com and this is the final June Facebook Live. Uh, we're gonna be having an Ask Mr. D session tonight and I'm hoping that this works better than last week's Facebook Live where I couldn't see anything that you were writing and so if that happens I want you to head over to YouTube Live. I'm doing it on my YouTube channel as well and you can write comments there. Since this is an Ask Mr. D, I hope this works correctly tonight. So, so far I cannot see if anybody's on here or not. So it's not looking like it's gonna function right. I don't know why that is, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead before we start Ask Mr. D and um, I'm gonna throw um, out the deals that are happening in my store for 12 hours, uh, a little more than 12, it'll go till eight in the morning. Um, so right now you can go to my store and get the middle school starter pack for free. Um, and that is going to be free until 8 in the morning uh, tomorrow. And that's a $59 value. It's a big deal. It's because I want to help new teachers, you know, especially those young teachers who are just starting out. So I want to keep them in our profession. But all teachers, anybody, grab it. I see somebody's here in the room. Yay, that's a good news story. Um, so middle school, new course, teacher starter pack. And I'm going to put a link with everything I'm talking about here right at the top of when we're done with this tonight at about 6 30. um so it, it that starter pack has the first three lessons of s cubed and many links to articles and youtube videos that will help you get started hey yay i can see people good yay hello angela good good i'm glad it's working tonight um so we'll use facebook as our main question for the ask mr d all right so anyway go grab that middle school starter pack tonight before 8 a.m it's free all right, so thanks for joining me. And then, of course, my syllabus is always free in my store, so you can grab that there tonight. And this, again, will be in a Google Doc link um, after this is finished. I also want to let everybody know about the podcast that I took part in um, with Alyssa Jansen-Jones of Smart Music. Um, it's called The Essentials of Sightseeing with Mr. D, and I'm going to put a link in the Google Doc for that as well. Um, and there may be some ideas in there that, uh, or an approach that we haven't heard from you before that you can use. Um, and as always, until 8 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to do an SQ bundle discount of 50% with level one, and it's going to be 124.50. It's already marked down. It's normally 249, and that's till 8 a.m. Now, after I have some other deals going on with that Jansen Jones thing, and that ends on, on the 30th of June. So if you're thinking, or if you know people who are thinking about getting this program, this is the final time you'll get these kind of discounts. July, August, September. You may see a 10% discount, but you're not going to see this kind of discount, so it's time, all right? Um, and I want to announce a couple more things before I do Ask Mr. D. Um, and you have, um, I'm going to do four surveys this school year, and I've got one of them ready. It's on a repertoire, um, and I want new ideas for myself and for everybody all in one spot. So uh, that repertoire survey is going to go up in this link that I'll put on the Google Docs. And I want you, and I've already gone in and shared my ideas on the survey. Uh, the aim of the surveys is to help you and me choose music for this school year for each nine weeks. So this one that we're doing now for the next two weeks, you'll write your answers in there, is for things that you use in your first nine weeks. Um, hello, Eliza Emanuel. I hope you're doing good. I've been watching this. Um, I hope everything's good with you, with your voice. Um, the survey for the first nine weeks is ready. It'll be ready tonight. I'll, just, I'll post it here. Um, all the answers are going to be visible to the participants, so you can come back to the survey over and over and see the answers that people leave 
Um, so it's a repertoire survey designed to help us uh, have enough time to pick music that's really, and I want stuff that's like n new and exciting to your middle school kids. Uh, if not new, then exciting to them. Something that's gonna really crank their tractor, get them going, things that you are really excited about. Um, especially for middle school, right? You know, um, I'm not so much looking for this first nine weeks for things that are like high music so much, but um, you know, in that first nine weeks, we've got to hook them. So, uh, but anyway, just share whatever you think is good. Um, uh, so that link's going to be in the Google Docs. And then before Mr. D starts letting you ask questions, Music Prodigy um, has just made it a lot easier to work with Chromebooks. So I'm super excited about that. Um, they, they've been really committed to s -cubed for about three years now. And if you're not familiar with Music Prodigy, just Google Music Prodigy and s -cubed. Um, eh, yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Okay, um, Angela, we're going to talk. I'm almost finished with these announcements. Um, the folks at Music Prodigy have now made it easier for Chromebooks. Because I, I got Chromebooks in January. A lot of you had shared with me that they weren't compatible with Chromebooks. Um, Music Prodigy examples wouldn't work. And now they've made it possible um, for you for your students just to go in and like uh, use the internet to sign in to Music Prodigy just like anything else and then they can use their Chromebooks and so I'm gonna have more in information about any specific details or whatever but it should be like you know foolproof for all Chromebooks that's what their aim is with this new way and I was waiting for some details from them today which uh, I had a crazy travel day I was in New York I was supposed to be back at noon I didn't get back Went to Savannah, came here, and 45 minutes ago just got down, so we didn't get to kind of close that out today, but they are making, they're working really hard to get things good. If you're not familiar with Music Prodigy, please check it out. It's good supplemental material for s -cubed. I designed it right as homework examples for s -cubed. Um, You're welcome to share um, this, to just tell, ask me anything that you want to ask me about, anything that goes on in your middle school classroom, and I have Diet, diet Mountain Dew, so I have energy. All right. So we first year choir teachers can really utilize this. I'm looking for repertoire now. Great. Okay. So um, I, in my, in this survey, the Mr. D uh, repertoire survey, uh, I've already listed a lot of things that I use. A lot of you who are familiar with my work um, know that there is a blog post about some song choices um, that you can use in your classrooms that have worked for me. Um, and I keep adding on to it and adding on to it. I love discovering new things. We have got to discover new things to stay excited about what we're doing. The kids sense it when we're not. So this repertoire survey, um, you know, is designed for me as much as anybody else because I want to make sure I've got, you know, I, I want something new in every cycle to keep me going. You know, that first nine weeks, um, I have pretty much set what I do with the kids and I like it, but I'm always interested in new stuff. All right, so last week we talked about classroom management. Uh, if you have any questions about things we didn't get to really address last week in classroom management, you're welcome to shoot those questions out as well. Um, and so I don't see any questions coming in. It's kind of a slow night. I think everybody's going to July 4th um, stuff and that's certainly fine. But um, if there's anything you can think of that you want to ask me about the classroom, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Chromebooks that I was using this year. Um, the Google Classroom changed my life. Like um, I've mentioned that in, in a couple of these Facebook Lives this um, in the last few months. Um, I didn't know what I was doing and I just jumped in like crazy to make sure, uh, just because I always do that, just to see what I could do and what I couldn't do. And as I've mentioned, I think two weeks ago, you know, recording things with a black screen on video camera, like parts, the alto part, soprano part, the baritone part, makes it so easy for you to have the kids go when you're need, having a sub and when they need to learn their parts or whatever. So, um, you know, that was, that was it's just fantastic for me and I can't wait to explore it some more. They took the Chromebooks away um, like around mid-May, so um, I didn't get to do anything, you know, over the summer, which I like to play with. If you have Chromebook ideas that you're using, please tell me about them. I, I want to know more about Kahoot. Um, so if anybody's out there using Kahoot, I want to know how you're using it. Um, I want to know from you, this is an Ask Mr. D, and since you're not asking, I'm going to ask you, what are some of the things uh, that you're doing in your classroom with technology that your kids really, really like? If there are things that are new that uh, you've got with your iPads or with your Chromebooks, or particularly with Chromebooks for me, I really want to know what you're doing. 
Um, so Angela, you're out here tonight. Liza's out here tonight. Can you uh, help me with any questions that you think new teachers might have? If we have a new teacher tonight who is about to start middle school, what would be your uh, words of wisdom that you would give the new teacher, uh, the first year, 22 year old um, middle school chorus teacher when they're walking in? What would you say, what would you have said to yourself um, if you, you know, could go back in time, if there were, because I know I have some experienced teachers here, um, what would you have said to yourself? I know what I would have said to myself, so I'll start here. Um, at Jordan, hello, are you, why, why are the cry, why the cry faces? Tell me all about it. Um, I would have said to myself to calm down, which I'm still saying, <laughs> it's not working. Um, actually, I, it has worked. I've, I've gotten a lot more chill about things, but um, practice routines over and over again. Yes, um, Angela, I agree 100%. How many years, Angela, have you been teaching middle school? Could you share that with, with us here? Um, and Liza, I know you've been teaching middle school for a little while too, so I'm curious, um, you know, how long some of you have been teaching and um, when did you think it became different? Uh, when did you feel like you turned a corner? What year was it that you were teaching that you felt like, now I, I know what I'm doing and what, you know, what did it? So uh, for me, it, it's always year three. So I'm going to answer that question first as I wait for others to chime in here. Um, I taught uh, my first year. I didn't think I was going to make it to year three. Um, I really almost didn't survive. I thought I could not do this the rest of my life. And here we are I'm about to do year 26, I think. So um, if you, you know, year three was when it changed that first, the first job that I had. Year four, I was like, I can, I'm totally doing this. Um, and it was because I, I didn't feel like I was hanging on by the edge all the time. Year three at a new job in New Jersey, it took three years again to get things back going. Um, okay, so Michelle, I love this advice. Hi, Dale. Talk less and let them do it. Pacing, pacing, pacing. That's so true. Um, you know, exactly. We tend to, as teachers to just talk and talk and talk. Hi, Courtney, how are you? And we're talking, I wanna know, I think you're new, Courtney, to um, teaching middle school, right? Um, so we're trying to talk tonight, like I've got in my store right now for free, the middle school new course teacher starter pack um, for a few hours. So if you know new teachers, please tell them to go grab it um, as, as a thank you for joining this uh, session tonight. Anyway, so I agree 100% with Michelle about doing, um, yeah, so Courtney, are you? what are you nervous about? What, what scares you the most about this new journey? And I'm gonna have a drink of Diet Mountain Dew. Garrett, um, new teacher here, long time. Okay, let's get lurker and first time poster. Well, thanks, Garrett, I'm so glad you're doing that. Just finished your first year teaching. Oh, bless you, I bet. Have you been sleeping all summer? Because um, I know I did after that first year. I haven't purchased S cubed yet. Um, your question is, how do you apply Sylphage to your choir repertoire? Um, okay, here's what I do. Um, my students every day are using their hand signals through S cube. And so when they're, it's like a language, right? You want them to speak it as often as possible. So when I introduce a new song, let's say the pattern is so mi re mi do for the melody. Um, we just, you know, have them sing it. I sing it and they sign it with me and they sing it right back to me. Um, and that gets them using the signs more, right? It's sort of rotish to do that, right? But over time, after they become fluent, obviously you're not needing to do that nearly, you know, the way you do in the beginning. So that's one of the ways that I use, um, use it immediately. I always teach the music from Soulfish first. You know, it makes their pitch so much more accurate. And then when you add the rhythms in there, they have one less struggle because they've already sung the pitches in tune. If others of you have ideas about how you use Soulfish with your repertoire, um, please share. But you have to think of it in terms of um, slowly, you know, slowly over time, you, uh, you don't need to do that rote stuff. They can do it. You just give, like, I give my eighth graders dough and I say, go in the corner and figure out, figure it out and come back in 10. Um, Trista, hey Dale, with some teachers quitting after their first five years, what is your advice about teacher burnout? Wow, uh, Trista, I would say that you have to figure out what's really important 
that you get done and what really isn't that important. And that's, uh, if you don't do that, uh, most of us are so like, we have to do every single thing that the administration tells us we have to do. And, and, and of course you don't want to break the rules and you don't want to be insubordinate. That's not what I'm saying. But you know how, like after a few years, I started to figure out that there were some things that they're just, they're being told for us to do. Um, and we care so much about our programs, we're already doing a hundred things, right? Um, and when you're trying to care about your program and then do all these other things that some, some of which are really not, they're not gonna follow through on, um, you're spinning your wheels and wasting your energy and stressing and that takes energy out of everything else that you need to do to be good for those kids. And um, when you're in those first five years, it's not easy to see some of those things. And that over time, I think that's the number one thing. And I, the other thing I would say is you have got to do things that make you happy. Um, you've got to sing stuff that makes you happy. You cannot do a musical, all state chorus, every district chorus, sixth grade honors chorus and all of that stuff without getting your life completely out of balance. Um, if you uh, do, I mean, should you do some of them? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think you have to choose very carefully how you spend your time. Otherwise, you're not going to last and then you're going to go somewhere else and you're going to be sad and then, you know, it's, it's hard to come back. Uh, Courtney, you're nervous about classroom management. Bingo, I think every middle school teacher is nervous about classroom management. Um, I think uh, the number one thing I would tell you is to listen to your kids. Um, you know, definitely practice the routines and have routines and know when they're not working. Pretty quick you'll figure out, you know, what's not working and just self-evaluate every single day. And um, listen to the kids when, you know, don't, don't always assume they're, they're doing it from a place of being wrong. You know, um, they know when you care about them and they're going to be there for you if they sense that care, even if you're stumbling and faltering with, you know, how you're teaching, your pacing or whatever. Um, Angela, I've taught 12 years, 10 elementary. This was my first year to teach middle school choir and band. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I remember us having um, some interaction about that. Um, I think going from elementary to middle school is the toughest um, transition. And I've watched, yeah, I don't know who said love, but yeah, because I think it's, you know, these kids, some people perceive middle school kids to be so um, like mean or sneaky and they can be, <laughs> but, um, but you know, they also will be so loyal to you if you are good to them, if you are, if they know that you care about them, if you look them in the eye, um, you know, if you, uh, you'll get it, you know, it just takes, it takes a while, you know, and you can't beat yourselves up and it's, it's, it's not the easiest uh, level for sure. All right, so Michelle says it was her four to six year that felt like, oh, I got this, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure there are still some days, Michelle, where you're going, mm, right? Um, I think we all have a few of those, although they get less and less with time. Um, I'm getting better and better the older I get with letting go of the day, like walking out the door and literally letting go of the day. Um, okay, um, Jordan, I love joining you here in this community. Thank you. I'm glad that you're here. I, I um, really uh, just, you know, remember those first three years teaching. And I was, I've said this last week, that first year, my little puppy, Katie, got me through that year. I would go home every day and just sit with her and love on her. And I also, working out got me through it. Like, I, I need to move and I need to work out and I love to work out. So that got me through it. Um, Julie, I'm glad it's helpful. Um, and hey, Jessica Milner, my former colleague from New Jersey, I'm so glad that you are here. I love seeing your name here. I hope you're well. And I saw that your daughter, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. It's an Ask Mr. D session, so it doesn't have to be so structured. But um, I saw your daughter like graduated and I remember when she was born. Anyway, um, hey, Sarah Francis Hope Williams. Um, I hope you're doing good. I hope you got my message. Anyway, Julie, Julie, at what point do you move from the TA system of rhythm to a numeric system like one and two and three and four? Um, I don't, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Um, I, you know, use the TA system. I think it's awesome. I think it prepares them when they go to high school for their teacher, which I think he uses numbers, you know. Um, and, you know, the whole thing about S-cubed and sight singing for me is, it's like an immersion 
into that system. It's an immersion, like if you went to France and you sat and you had to just speak the language and you, you maybe didn't understand all the grammar but because you had to do it every single day, you know, you are good at it. And then at the end of S cubed, you know, like in level two is when we really get into some of the whys and I move, but you know, even then they're speaking really complex language, doing chromatics and all kinds of things in level two of S cubed. And they're, they're figuring out things I couldn't do in college. Um, but they don't really understand the whys. But at the end of SQ, they're ready to go to high school, and and some high school teachers are using this also. So, but it's different when their intellectual ability is at a higher level. I think high school teachers definitely do it differently, um, and maybe a little faster, and they can teach them a little bit more about the theory as they go. Um, okay, well, Pamela Robbins, I am glad to be saving you. Um, I, uh, whatever I'm doing here is what I wish I had had when um, I see something on YouTube, I'm gonna try to get to that. Um, when I started teaching, and I'm so grateful for a platform like social media to uh, get to share ideas with teachers. Um, okay, so, all right, so Michelle just hit 20 years in January, and I agree, it does get easier. I'd say be consistent for the kids it makes things easier. Yeah, you know, when I first started teaching, I thought I was being consistent and I was not um, uh, being consistent and the kids called me on it and it was not cute. You know, they absolutely, when you're not fair to them, they know it and they tell you. And if they don't tell you, they act out in a way that tells you. So, um, okay, so Mary says, can you speak a little bit about your first week of school procedures? Do you use a pretest, sing on the first day? If so, what songs and when do you discuss rules? Okay, um, all right, so I've got a lot of stuff uh, with that. Um, that. That first day of school, the schedule's crazy. You don't really know how long you're gonna see the kids. Sometimes the schedule gets crazy. Kids are walking in late. Uh, so you've got to be flexible. Um, when they walk into my room, I've got um, very clear directions with whiteboards about where to go and what to do. They have a puzzle. I, I put directions on the board, you know, do the puzzle because I want to have time to settle with the kids. As soon as everybody feels settled, we do, um, we do forbidden pattern. And I, I introduce myself, I'm Mr. Duncan, and I want you just to follow and do what I say uh, physically, and, and we go right into forbidden pattern the game. Um, and then they are singing right off, like that's their first real interaction with me. And then I make it as fun as I can because I want them to leave that first day and want to come back to chorus. Um, and then at the end, like actually whenever they're in that first day, if there's a time, like when I say put your puzzles away, I'll say who has a folder and, um, and uh, they hold up their folders. Well, I want you to take that puzzle and put it inside the folder. And make sure your name is on the front of the folder. So we're practicing procedures, but I'm not talking about rules, right? If it's appropriate in whatever you do your first day to practice procedures, then do it. Uh, learn through doing. I don't say the rules until I start like the second or third day going through my very detailed syllabus, which is in my store for free. So go download that. Um, and you just go to shop now to get there, but um, at the top of Facebook anyway. Um, so, and then on the second and third day, I want to make sure they have fun. I don't want to do a whole day of rules. That is a life force sucking experience. So we do some rules and then we do something fun. Um, and we try to sing each of those first five days. It can be simple rounds, you know, from any round book, anything fun where you can, you know, start to teach about vowel production. You can start to teach about, well, you're already teaching posture through forbidden patterns. So. Um, you're just teaching, you're making that first week, you know, getting into some of the rituals, practicing some of the things that you want them to do um, on a daily basis, but also you do have to go over the rules. And it takes me probably, I would say the beginning of the second week is when I finish because uh, with going through the rules and the syllabus, maybe sometimes with some classes by the end of the first week, it depends on if I've seen them. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff in my store. Uh, um, the first month of school is one of the products in my store. It's, I think it's $5. I just put that out a couple weeks ago and you should go check that out um, because that has everything, uh, video links that are private in my YouTube channel that I've shared with everybody uh, in that PowerPoint. Um, so in the Patty's question, in the middle of first term this year, I got moved from K-6 to only 5-6 general. Without S-cubed, I would not have survived because I also went 
from seeing them twice a week to five days a week. Yes, bless your heart, Patty. Yeah, that's, I'm glad to hear that. You know, I started creating S Cubed when I was teaching general music. And the reason I created it was, an, uh, was because I wanted my students who had to be in my class, they did not volunteer. Um, I had to, uh, I wanted to get them to sing and I wanted them to have fun. And so that's why, that's where I created the, the very first several lessons of S Cubed. Um, you guys, just so you know, if you're on YouTube right now, I cannot answer those questions. Let me see, can I? Um, yeah, I, let me see if I can get that um, to be visible. Oh, I do see. Okay, so I'm gonna answer some YouTube questions too since I don't see anything here. Um, I will be a first year middle school teacher choir this year. Wow, okay, um, I'm trying to get back to it. I don't use YouTube normally on here, but um, okay, uh, Madison, that's awesome. Congratulations, Dodie, I'm hoping to be a first year music teacher this year. Your information is so helpful. What are some of the most important procedures you teach at the beginning of the year? Uh, folder care is probably the most important procedure. Hey, Tara, and happy, I bet Michigan weather's great right now. I hope so, uh, down here. It's um, we have, um, uh, I'd say folders is really important. You know, how to take care of the music. What is your folder procedure gonna be when you hand out the music? Make it a thing. It's so important because if you don't, they throw the music in there and they don't have any respect for that music. Uh, Madison also has another question on YouTube. As a young teacher, how would you combat the problem of students thinking of you as someone on their level? Um, that is a tough one, uh, Madison. I'm trying to see, I didn't finish it. I want to make sure they respect me as a teacher. You know what, you earn respect every day, whether you look, I looked about 14 years old when I started teaching. And, um, you know, I was jumping around the classroom, I'm an athlete, so I was very, you know, just very animated. And um, Pamela, it's gonna be archived on YouTube, um, so that's why I'm doing it live there. So um, anyway, you earn respect. I, I, one of my biggest things that I used to hear as a, a young teacher is for older teachers saying, these students don't respect me or I, I, they should respect me because I'm older than they are. I don't think that. I, I mean, I, they should, but you know, that is really not how it works with middle school. Um, what it, how it works with middle school is you treat them with respect and then they give it back to you in return. And I talked about that last week in, in, the, in the classroom management session. Um, I really believe that uh, it's circular. Respect is 100% circular. Um, you don't earn respect because you've been, they don't care what you've done. They don't care who you are. They don't care uh, anything about anything except for what's happening in that classroom in that moment and how they perceive you to be treating them. And, um, and one thing you always need to be able to say to a child is, uh, if they are bad to you, it's, it, you know, one-on-one -on -one always is, has I, have I ever disrespected you? And you need to know that the answer to that is going to be no from that child. It has to be. And if you have any question that it would be no, then you are, you need to change some things. So they've got to feel respected. Um, you've got to think about what they're going through. You've got to uh, think like a sixth grader when you're giving instructions. Um, so that you can uh, explain step by step what they have to do. Uh, and as somebody said earlier in the Facebook chat, you have to do more and talk less. You know, remember that children learn by doing. And so if you can do something um, in order to teach some sort of um, practice that you want to have in your class or system or procedure, then do it, you know, and, and let them go through the process. And then after they've done it, then you can you know actually talk about some of the details and then they're more engaged um so i don't see any more questions coming in let me see oh juliet uh we are looking at some fun choir stuff outside of i don't see the rest <laughs> um anyway so i'll wait and see if that comes up um it's about 6 30 now and so i'm gonna wait for more questions and i'll stay here as long as you want me to but just want to remind you that middle school new course teacher starter pack is free in my store at $59 normally and it's free until that's okay no worries Juliet um, until 8 a.m. and course syllabus is always in my store for free so go get it shop now on Facebook if you want to go there or just Google teacher pay teachers Dale Duncan or something um, that podcast uh, Eliza, Alyssa Jansen Jones here's the uh, link will be on the Google Doc that I'm gonna post in a moment 
And level one is 124.50. It's already marked down until eight in the morning. Um, it, these prices won't be happening after June 30th because everybody starts thinking about sightseeing in July, August, September, and the prices are always going to be a little higher at that time. How do you deal with solo opportunities? Dodie, uh, hey, Ruthann, welcome from Kentucky. How do you deal with solo? I uh, never force the children to sing alone, ever. Um, I offer those solo opportunities up uh, at least one in nine weeks if I can, in terms of like if I pick a song with a little solo in it or something. Um, I bring them up to the front of the room, I let them sing it in a group first, and then I go one by one facing me. So it's a little less intimidating than facing their peers. Um, Juliet, we're looking at doing some fun stuff outside of class just to build relationships. One of the things was a water gun balloon fight as far as respect goes that you just discussed. I was wondering if the students might respect me less if I participate in fun. No, they will love you for that. You absolutely need to do stuff like that. They want to laugh. They want to have fun. They want to, uh, you know, know you are a human being. When you make a mistake, you need to admit that mistake, you know, um, when uh, that doesn't mean you're not firm, you know, it doesn't mean, I mean, if you've watched any of my YouTube videos of me teaching my classes, you can see, um, you know, that the systems are in place. Uh, I don't give, you know, I never call a child out. We praise in public and we uh, correct in private. That is a big, important rule for us to remember with the middle school kids. So whenever you uh, can praise children and do things positive, they just love it. They feed on it. They want to be recognized. Remember this child a few years ago? She's going to be in eighth grade this year. It was Taylor and in sixth grade. I didn't know this child, but it was like the first day or first week of school. And um, I had 65 children in there and I had my seating chart and I'm you know, trying to learn the names without like going through and saying them. And we were just in the middle of like... Uh, I don't know, working on her vocal warm up or forbidden pattern, I don't remember. And I said, Taylor, you, that is the most awesome uh, uh, posture. You, I, I said it better than that. You, that's the most awesome posture. I want every student to be just like you. And she like lit up. It was beautiful to watch. Um, so, Christy, question uh, Is there a way to buy the products with the purchase orders through school? Yes, there is, Christy. Um, you um, you could Google purchase orders Mr. D S cube and you would go that would take you to my blog post about how to do purchase orders through TBT. Um, we currently have S cube level one and love it. We need to move on to level two. I'm interested in some of the other products you mentioned here. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Christy. You're welcome. Yeah, that's uh, and if you want to email me at in the middle with Mr. D at gmail.com if you don't have luck finding that blog post about the purchase orders, that, that would be fine. Um, do you do name games? How do you memorize names quickly? Um, Dodi, I'm not great at memorizing the names quickly. Um, my classes are so large that I use, honestly, I use my seating charts all year for sixth grade. Um, I mean, I get some of the names, obviously the ones that are doing like musical and extra things, I, I get their names, but like I do, I can't, in the first week with so many kids, I just feel like I wanna sing with them. Uh, I say their name whenever I can, you know, like from the chart. Um, but it's so hard when I have 110 new sixth graders every year. Um, I've done name games in the past, but they've taken a lot of time, and um, I haven't done them as much as I probably should, quite frankly. What are some of your favorite recruitment ideas, both from elementary schools and from within your school? My favorite is that our district does a... Um, we have... They support this financially, so we're really lucky. But um, we do a um, an event called the Cluster Festival. Um, I feed to Lakeside High School, so we have Lakeside, Henderson, and then all of our feeders for elementary. We all come together. We sing two songs. We go elementary, and then we do middle, and then we finish with high. And um, the kids just you know love seeing each other and feeling a part of that. That is such an awesome thing. If you can organize that with your district, I highly recommend it. Um, my favorite recruitment tool, it, that's definitely the favorite thing that we have, and that's, I'm glad. If, if I were in a district that didn't have that, I would try to organize that. That would be something that's really, it's so important. And you get that time with the other teachers in your district to talk between the songs and kids are going up and down off the stage, whatever. 
Um, so that's number one. And not, recruitment within school, it, it's really a uh, middle school. It's really about their experience. It's about kids loving chorus and talking about it. And um, your, their daily experience is what's going to make the difference if you're trying to get you know, rising seventh graders to come into course or rising eighth graders. And I do the musical every year in the spring for the entire school. So I think that's probably the biggest in school recruitment thing because kids come to me after that, like, I want to be a part of that, you know, and that's cool. Um, life work balance. How do you make it work? And, um, <laughs> it's like I was saying, I don't know if you were here for this part, but, um, you cannot do everything. Um, and you need to be okay with making decisions about not doing everything. If you can't, if you're not a musical person and you don't want to do a musical, then don't do the musical. If your passion is choral music, art, high art, then you make sure you're doing that. Um, how do you how do you do junior musicals with a track? I have Dodie. I have done, uh, and I love them, all of them. Um, I stopped doing them. Uh, the junior musicals only because I'm in a school without a real stage. And so I started doing just musical reviews. We could do it on the gym floor a little bit easier. Uh, we don't have lighting. We don't have, you know, we don't have, so I just had to work within the space I had. Um, life work balance also, Anne, is going to be, I, I mean, I think we have to take care of our bodies. You know, like I'm really old. So, I, and I, I have made sure that I've worked out um, cause I love to work out. And if you don't love to work out, then you need to try to find something you like to do. Like if it's just power walking, you know, I go out in the middle of the school day and I power walk. I, I, um, just for like 20 minutes and I don't get sweaty, you know, I'll, I, I won't make it that powerful, but I'll, you know, if I'm dressed up or whatever, but I don't dress up that much for school. It's very sort of casual. I want to be loose and be able to get around and move. Um, for a review, is it seven songs from the musical or less? Um, no, no, no. My musical review just means we don't do uh, songs from one particular show. We're not doing a show with a story. So it's our fundraiser that we do every year. So we work on it all year long. We pick the songs based on the talent we have. We custom build it around those kids. And it's really what I love to do. I like, I just got back from New York today because I went to see three shows. Like I just love musical theater. And that is one thing that keeps my life work balance correct because I am doing, like, I just love it. Like I sat in the theater three times in the last 48 hours, um, 72 hours, and I was in heaven, just even if the show wasn't that great. And I, all of them were great, but I mean, just, you know, in the moments that aren't so good, I just love watching people do live stuff. That's what cranks me. You have to know what cranks you so that you can do it. Uh, well, good, Dodie, you should do musical theater, right? This is YouTube over here I'm talking to. I am old, Tara Cleveland. <laughs> I'm really old. Like, I, you know, I'm old, but it's okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I saw the... Um, I was, so, in New York, and I'm going to wrap this up, because I, uh, I saw Summer the Musical, and I'm normally not a fan of jukebox musicals, and th that was my least favorite, but I did enjoy it. It was, it was good. Um, I saw The Band's Visit. Loved it. Loved it. I see why it won Best Musical. And I saw Mean Girls. It was fun. It was so much fun. All right. Well, I'm going to start to close it down here. And I just want to remind you that it's 124.50 level one in my store. Shop now. Go get it. Tell everybody you know um, because it's going to be uh, July soon and the prices won't be that low. Um, starter pack is free. Please go get it and share it. Tell everybody you know to go in there. Uh, Music Prodigy is getting easier for Chromebooks. And don't forget about the repertoire. Survey. Yes, Dodie, thank you. Um, I want to, I'm going to put it up tonight on the Google Doc link. Y'all have a great July 4th and we'll be, we'll see you back soon. Absolutely, Juliet. Thank y'all for being here and hope to see you later in the summer before school starts. All right. Bye. How do I turn YouTube live off? <laughs>